welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about keratin bonded extensions. That's actually what I have in my hair now. I had these installed, I believe it was June 1st, um, and these are my third set of keratin bonded extensions, so I felt like it was a good time to share with you how I feel about them. If you check down below, I should have everything kind of categorized by topic, so in case you don't want to sit through this whole thing and there's just like one or two things you want to know about specifically, Hopefully, um, I will have it categorized accordingly, and you can just, um, you know, quick, you know, just go to that quickly. To my knowledge, keratin is a fibrous protein that can be found in your hair as well as your skin and nails. So the extensions I currently have in my hair are from a company called Ab Hair. If you order from this company, you will receive your hair in a package like this. This package contains one bundle. One bundle is going to look like this, and inside you have all of these different individual bonds. So as you can see, these are clear U-tip keratin bonded extensions. The keratin bond actually feels like um, kind of like a plastic and then it is melted down using a heat tool and then it's wrapped around your hair and that's how it actually adheres to your hair. So I think the thing I get asked the most when it comes to keratin bonded extensions is will they damage your hair and typically when someone asks that they ask it with the assumption that it definitely will damage your hair. I think that's because there's so many horror stories out there when it comes to this type of extension. I mean, I read those, I did a lot of research before I got my extensions on the first time, and I read tons of horror stories, but I trusted my hairstylist, so I wasn't really that worried about it. In order to prevent a horror story of your own, I think it's very important that you do your research and that you find a hairstylist who's certified in this type of like hair extension installation and making sure that they have you know experience doing it. I know that my hairstylist had tons of experience so I trusted her. I also have been going to her for a very long time so I knew that my hair was in good hands, literally. So after you've had your hair installed it's really up to you at that point to make sure that you care for your extensions and your hair properly to avoid damage. I'll go more into that when it comes to the whole like how to care for your extensions section. A lot of people complain that their hair got really really thin after they had their extensions and um, th there's a couple things you need to take into consideration when it comes to whether or not your hair got thinner after you had your extensions. If you think about it, your hair is however thick that it is prior to getting these extensions put in and then you get like five bundles of extensions installed into your hair that obviously were not there prior and you get used to that hair being in your head for six months or seven months or whatever and then you go and you have them taken out. When you have them taken out your hair is going to feel thinner because it is. You don't have all that hair in there anymore but you kind of forget that your hair was thinner previously. Not only that, but our hair sheds however many strands a day, but when you have these extensions in, they are bonded to your hair. So even if your hair is shedding from your scalp, it's not actually able to leave your head because it is glued to the bond. So that hair is actually still in this you know, it's up here with the other hair, so then it still feels really, really thick. So yes, your hair will appear and feel thinner than it did while you had the extensions in, but it's not because of the extension. Basically, the bottom line is if you have them installed properly by someone who knows what they're doing and you care for them during the time that you have them in, they will not damage your hair. I only notice an improvement in the condition of my hair after I've had them in. I think this is because um, there's a lot less heat applied to my natural hair. For one, I just don't flat iron my hair as often when I have extensions in. Typically, I just let it go wavy or I have my hair up in a messy bun. I rarely will apply heat to my hair. So that alone allows for you know, my hair to just breathe. And even when I do flat iron my hair, I have the extensions that are wrapped around my natural hair and the heat is being applied to the extensions directly and the extensions are basically forming a barrier between the flat iron and my natural hair. So my natural hair does receive the heat, but it's not so intense as if it's just on my hair directly, if that makes sense. I think the next most commonly asked question is how much do they cost? And honestly, this is a very relative Thing. I think it depends on where you live, um, specifically in the States. If you live on the West Coast, say California, you'll probably end up spending a little bit more than if you live 
say Ohio. It also depends on your hairstylist and how much they charge to install them and also the cost of the hair itself. So depending on where you order your hair from, it, that's going to vary in cost. You'll need to probably set up a consultation with your hairstylist to find out how many bundles you'll need to order to do like a full head. If you're going to do a full head, obviously you don't have to. Um, you can do like a partial or whatever and you know that's going to vary in cost as well. So it's all very relative. It's really up to you to do your research and find out where to go and what to buy. So the bonded extensions are kind of considered a permanent extension, but that's also like, I mean, they're not permanent. They're not going to last you forever. The permanence means that you're not going to take them out and reapply them every time you want them. They will last anywhere from, I mean, this is kind of depending on you as well. So they could last anywhere from like four to like seven months. I think my two previous times I went about six to seven months. I think you can prolong the life of your extensions just with proper maintenance and care for them. Now I'm going to talk about how to properly care for and maintain your extensions. When it comes to brushing your hair, you really have to pay attention to what kind of brush you use. Uh, in the past, I've used a boar's hair brush. The bristles aren't going to get caught on your extensions and then yank them out, but I also find with a brush like that, it's a little bit harder to actually brush through my hair. So this time I've actually been using my dry bar brush. I mentioned this brush in a previous favorites video. On the packaging, it says that this is safe for extensions. It says extensions and clip-ins so I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to use that with my bonded extensions and so far I've had no problems with this brush. Regardless of what kind of brush you use, you need to be careful with how you brush your hair. And actually this goes for whether you have extensions in or not, but especially if you have extensions in. It's advised that you actually brush your hair twice a day. So I brush my hair when I get up in the morning and then before I go to bed. When you brush your hair, you actually want to brush from the bottom of your hair and then work your way up. So you want to get the, the tangles and stuff like that out here and hold on to your hair here. So like what I would do is I would hold here and then brush through this until there's no tangling and then I move up about another inch and I brush through that as well until I get all the way to the top. If you just go through and brush like crazy like it's your own hair, which you really shouldn't do it with your own hair anyway, you're going to end up pulling some extensions out. When it comes to shampooing and conditioning your hair, you want to opt for products that are sulfate free. A favorite brand of mine is the Organics brand. I've been using that for years now. Currently I'm using a shampoo and conditioner by the brands Moroccan oil these were sent to me to try out and I've been loving them they are color safe sulfates phosphate and paraben free you should really avoid using sulfates and parabens on your natural hair as well but even more so when you have extensions I believe the sulfate can tend to break down the keratin bond and obviously you don't want that to happen. Another thing to consider is to make sure you properly dry your hair out of the shower. It's very good to like let your hair air dry when it's your natural hair because the less you apply heat to your hair, the better. However, with the extensions, you don't want water to get into the bond and just set there. That will end up breaking down the bond and then they will fall out. I'm a huge fan of letting my hair air dry so what I end up doing is I will take the blow dryer and just dry my roots so that I make sure all my bonds are dry and then I let the rest of my hair air dry. Now when it comes to styling your hair you can use heat tools but you want to make sure that you stay I would say like about a half inch to an inch away from your bonds. As soon as you run a heat tool over that bond it's going to melt and break that bond and then you will lose that bit of hair. So there's a few things to keep in mind with these extensions. You can expect to lose about 10 bonds or so throughout the life of your extensions. It seems like a lot, it's really not, it's, you're not really going to notice it that much, but you can always go back to your hair stylist and have a few more put back in when a certain area becomes a little bit more sparse. One thing I have noticed, uh, like the first time I had my extensions in, my hair was very, very damaged, very brittle, and in very bad shape. I I don't even think I lost one bond that whole time and then when I had my extensions done the second time my hair was crazy healthy and I lost quite a few bonds. Basically the healthier your hair the more you might notice some natural slipping of the bonds. It's just kind of how it goes like if it's healthy it's gonna be more slick. You'll notice that even with hairstyles like I have the hardest time teasing my hair and keeping my hair in a certain up to or whatever because it's so healthy now. Um, which is a little frustrating, actually. I don't know, like with the more damage your hair is, sometimes it's easier to style. And same kind of goes with the extensions. They will adhere to your damaged hair a little bit better than your super healthy virgin hair. 
So the first 48 hours after having your extensions installed, you're not allowed to shampoo or condition your hair. You need to allow your bonds to actually settle so that they don't end up slipping out when you do go to wash your hair. Also during the first 48 hours, you might experience a little discomfort, particularly when you go to bed. Like when you lay your head down on the pillow, it's a little uncomfortable. You're gonna maybe wanna scream a little bit. Maybe slap a baby. Not really, you don't want to slap a baby. Unless that baby's crying and then you might want to slap a baby. I'm kidding. Don't get crazy. It is uncomfortable, but it's not unbearable. And just for the first few days or so, you just, there's like a tightness around your head and you might have a headache or something like that, but it's, it's worth it. One of the best opportunities for your hair to get tangled and matted is when you're sleeping because we tend to move around a lot, maybe more than we realize. Um, and when we're doing that, we're moving our head around the pillow and then the hairs are going to get woven in between each other and knot up. So to avoid that from happening, you can either pull your hair up like in a ponytail or like a bun or just pull your hair into a braid and then that way your hair isn't just doing some crazy things when you sleep. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but it's important that you visit your hairstylist about once a month for some routine maintenance. That way your hairstylist can go in and kind of like free up some of the matting that might be occurring because that's going to kind of happen but as long as you go in regularly and get that taken care of it's not a big mess in the end my first set of extensions <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it like it was it was bad it was really bad like we probably spent like an hour trying to get knots out of my hair after I had my extensions taken out it was kind of I learned my lesson. My second set of extensions, I went in every month. I really can't express enough how important it is to go in for that maintenance. Um, when I had my extensions taken out the second time, it was like not a big deal at all. Okay, now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the hair specifically. I did mention that the extensions I have in my hair right now are from a company called Ab Hair. So the two previous times, I just, I used um, Great Links extensions, but Ab Hair contacted me and wanted to know if I wanted to try any of their clip-in extensions, and I have so many other brands of clip-ins, I was actually more interested in the Fusion extensions. So I ordered 20 inches in the color number two, which is dark brown. Right off the bat, I noticed a huge difference between these and the Great Links extensions. So straight out of the packaging, this is how they look. This is one bundle. This hair is very silky, very smooth, very shiny. However, it actually kind of tends to taper off at the ends. Um, I don't know if you can tell. The Great Links extensions were like the same thickness from the bond to the tip. I think some people might be irritated by that. Like they, like I think a lot of people want something that's going to be thick from root to tip. However, like at least my hair naturally does not perform that way. My hair naturally does get thinner at the ends. I think most people's hair tends to get thinner at the ends. So this actually looks a lot more natural on with my great lengths extensions because they were so thick at the ends. When they were cut, they kind of looked like spaghetti in a way, especially when you curled them. They didn't curl as nicely. These, when you curl them, they they're so much more wispy and like the curl is prettier and just a lot more natural. So I actually would not consider that a negative thing. I can see how someone might, but personally, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. The bad thing is not every single bond is going to be 20 inches. Uh, when we were installing the extensions in my hair, there were quite a few shorter extensions. I mean, even up to like there were some really short ones. That wasn't that big of an issue either. We just ended up installing them higher up on my head. I would have just had my hairstylist cut in layers anyway. So instead we just kind of put the shorter ones to the side and then applied those you know, when we got there. Also a difference between these extensions and the Great Links extensions. The bond on these is actually clear and the Great Links extensions, the bonds on those are actually the same color as the hair. There's definitely a pro to having the bond the same color as the hair especially when your hair is as dark as mine these bonds when they were heated up they already kind of went a little bit lighter and then as i've washed my hair and dried my hair multiple times since having them installed they have lightened up quite a lot so i can actually see them a little bit easier than the when i had the great lengths extensions in you could not even see the bonds from the great lengths extensions like at all so i think i'm going to end up going and having some of them removed because they're a lot more obvious because the bond has basically kind of turned white which is very noticeable in my hair. There's also a price difference between the great length extensions and these ab hair extensions. The ab hair is a lot more affordable. I believe the great lengths um, for 18 inches 
for one bundle was anywhere from like 80 to 90 dollars I really don't remember specifically and then the ab hair extensions for 20 inches is like 36 dollars so there's a considerable price difference there so there's the whole saying you get what you pay for and I feel like the more you pay for when it comes to extensions, you know, you're gonna get like the Cadillac of extensions. And the less you pay, you might end up with the Geo Metro of extensions. I'm not saying that these ab hair extensions are the Geo Metro of extensions. I'm saying, I'm saying there's a difference. There are pros and cons to both extensions. And honestly, my biggest issue with these extensions are the bonds themselves, which, I mean, if you have lighter hair, I don't think it will be very obvious at all. Because my hair is so dark, it's a little bit more obvious. I can get creative with the way I style my hair to try to hide them, but if I just have my hair down and the wind blows, you're going to see some, some bonds showing. So my overall opinion about the app hair extensions, I think they're really great quality and they're definitely more affordable than the Great Lengths extensions. Um, I think, like I said, if you have lighter hair, I don't think the bonds will actually be as noticeable on you, and they're not terrible on me. So anyway, if you're interested in these extensions, I will have them linked down below. I think that's everything for this video. Again, check below for the link to the blog post that'll go up with this video. Um, I'll recap everything that I touched on in this video, and if I have left something out, I will be sure to include it in that blog post. I'll also have um, pictures and some just more information. If you have any additional questions, please be sure to leave them down below so I can answer them for you. I will answer them to the best of my ability. I really hope you guys found this video helpful, especially if you are interested in getting extensions for yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.